your your different chiropractors to take a weekend out and come and sit in something like this to learn more about how to help people. And um, I'll, I'll, I've had my magnet here for about a, a year and a half, and I'm going to give you my testimonial, and then we'll get into the lecture. And what I'm going to try and do with the has anybody watched? How many of you guys have watched the video of this? A couple. Okay. So I'm going to try and kind of blend. Um, Business with healing. That's kind of what the lecture is about. And I would consider this sort of a low hanging fruit if you're looking for another way to add a, a, a group of patients you would not normally see in your practice. And the need, for the ability to help them is not there in medicine today. There's a huge unmet need there. And if you get, it, if you get into this type of work, you will see suffering. And you'll also have you'll have more people crying in your office than with any other condition that you treat. They're crying out of gratitude. More people crying, you're going to have more cakes, more Christmas presents. You're going to have more, uh, more wives hugging you and kissing you, and you'll see people go from you know, walkers to canes to walking, you know, that kind of stuff. So there's the business side, and then there's the healing side. I got introduced to the magnetosphere about, um, I guess about two years ago. And so I've got sort of a challenging story, but it has a good ending. And so my wife was diagnosed with uh, stage four ovarian cancer in June of 2013. And they gave her a very low um, probability of living. And, and so, you know, I had work, I had a practice, I had small children. She'd be on chemotherapy. And I missed a lot of work. And so patients that were friends, I was friendly with uh, several patients, and they found out why I wasn't in, at work. And this one gentleman uh, that happened to be a neighbor of Jerry's, um, Paul, said, you know, you need to look at this resonator. And I said, what the heck's a resonator? He said, well, it's this magna something. Mm -hmm. So I go, OK, thanks, Paul. Mm -hmm. And I just discounted it. And so I guess at the time, my wife was in chemo for about six months. And then um, he came back for his next monthly appointment. He said, hey, did you look at that resonator thing? And it's like, oh, tell me what that was again. And I kind of wrote it down. And uh, I didn't even think about it again. So he comes back the third month. He's like, did you look at that resonator? It's like, tell me what that is again. He says, get out of the way. And he, he goes to my computer. And he's like, let me look it up for you. And he's like, you need to look at this. I lived. And he said, tell me more about it. He says, well, I lived next to Jerry like 25 years ago. And I saw him cure cancer. Mm -hmm. I saw him cure AIDS. He was on TV. And it's like, oh, all right. I'll take a look at it, because things weren't going well. And um, I didn't call the company, but I went to their website and got the names of all the doctors that had them at that time. And so I'm sort of a, you know, I'm kind of obsessive, compulsive kind of guy. And I was going to call everybody on the, um, everybody that owned the magnosphere, I was going to call. I don't know if I ever told you that story. Yeah. I was going to call everybody. Yeah, I was going to call everybody. And so, and so I, only got, I got to like halfway through the list of owners of Magnuspheres, and I called Steve and said, I'm ready to buy one. And, so, and that's kind of how it happened. The stories that I got from the doctors that own them said, you know, I've got this in case I get cancer. I've got this because I want to be healthier. I mean, I'm seeing these miracles of the patients that I would treat. And so the stories were just really powerful. And it was just a no-brainer at that time to buy one. And um, my wife had finished a year of almost weekly chemotherapy on a Monday. I took the day off, spent it with, with her. Um, and these guys came the next day and did my installation. And they were there two days. They were there on a Tuesday and Wednesday. And um, at the time, my wife had finished her chemo. You know, they measure your neutrophils, they're measuring to see where she's at. And so she finished chemo, blood work that morning, and her neutrophils were like, we might need to put you in the hospital. You know, you can't leave the house. The kids, we had to wear masks at home. And so I called Jerry and said, you know, this is where my wife's at. You know, is it, you think I should put her in there? And he's like, yeah, just use the R1 code. You know, use the R1 code. So I put her into the machine. I brought her into the office after the office closed on Thursday night, so no one was there. Put her in the R1 code. And, you know, she felt a little tingling, but she was just a mess at that time. And um, 
and then she goes for her um, blood work on Friday morning. Where they draw blood, and if it, if it stayed the same or got any worse, they do this, the, these shots that bring up your neutrophils. This thing's called um, Nulost or Nupagen. And they basically inject E. coli into your abdominal cavity, and it makes your bones go onto a you know, severe pain. Your bones swell up, producing uh, white blood cells. So she had, and all, the rest of her blood work was messed up. So one session, they do the blood work that next morning, and she calls me and says, my blood work is completely normal. Everything was normal, yeah. Everything was normal. And so that, I, I don't know if I did it that day, but I said, I bought, a, I bought a halo for home use very shortly after that. And so, you know, she got through, uh, and, and she's, been, she's been using it since then. And she finished her chemo. The good news is she got into remission. It's 18 months later. But uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. And, um, but she was left with severe lymphedema in her left leg and neuropathy in both her feet. And it was like, holy cow, can this get any worse? And so I talked to Jerry, talked to Steve, talked to Rob, and we started cycling through um, protocols for lymphedema using the E codes. We started fine tuning neuropathy protocols and it's pretty much under control if not resolved. There are days where her foot might swell up and she'll get back into the chair in the E codes and um, she can do what she needs to do. So I've got a real big investment in you guys and I really thank you for what you've done. Jerry, thank you for what you've, what you've done. And, uh, and so as a postscript to the story, she was doing a lot better. So we took a trip to Cancun in June of that year. And you know, somebody's taking us out on a sailboat, one of the instructors. And he's like, you know, my, my wife didn't have any hair at the time. So I was like, oh, yeah, my mother, my mother's, uh, she's treating up in Brownsville or somewhere in Texas. She just, she had a recurrence of stage four breast cancer. And she's, she's in remission now. She was seeing a doctor. She goes and sits in this big chair with these big rings around it. And I'm like Cancun, Mexico, out on a sailboat, and this guy's telling me a story. I'm thinking, holy cow, there's no accidents. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. Actually, I put a lot of people, I put a lot of people with cancer into the machine just to see what happens. You know, sometimes I've treated them for free, and um, a number of people have bought their own machines because of their changes on CT scans, and, uh, and um, I've got other stories, but I'll stop there because I want to talk about the, Neuropathy. Hey, one minute. One minute. The protocol you should use now is code 3, code 10A, back and forth. 3, 10A? For the leg. For the leg, okay. For the lymphedema. The leg. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry's been wonderful. This whole company's been wonderful. So, so we're looking at things a little differently in doing chiropractic. Are chiropractors nerve doctors or bone doctors? Mm -hmm. What yes. are we? Are? Yes, like nerve or bone? Yes. Both. Yeah. Do we work on nerves? You know, we usually work on nerves like between the neck and the sacrum. And then if we work the neck, we're getting the hands. We work the back, we're getting sciaticas. But you know, for nerve doctors, we should be working on the brain. And how about the foot nerves and the hand nerves individually? So it shouldn't be a big stretch for you to say, you know what? I am a chiropractor. I'm a nerve doctor, but I'm a bone doctor. But we're really nervous system doctors. That's how I see myself. Exactly. This lets you expand your ability to treat the nervous system and be profitable at it. Right. All right. All right. So that's my background. Um, you know, I just felt compelled to help you, help to share this stuff because it's been helpful. I'm not selling anything. Just by experience, I'm not a diplomat in neurology. You know, I start start out more toward musculoskeletal chiropractic and moved into this by help, trying to help patients that had neuropathy and adjusting them, adjusting the feet, doing myofascial release, not helping them. Bought some technology like three years ago, had good results with one patient, but it failed on the next six or seven. And then added some other technology, that helped. And we'll, I'll talk about that specifically. And then um, um, added in the magnosphere and things changed, all right? So why should you consider neuropathy? We're nervous system doctors, right? It's very easy. Huge on that need, 20 million people, they're all over your community. It's very hard to get them into your office once you exhaust your patient base, all right? You're gonna meet people that have been to, I'm treating guys that have been to Duke, and to the Mayo Clinic, 
They've been everywhere. John Hopkins Neurology Center, and there were, there were, uh, there's the Neuropathy <laughs> Treatment Center of America. Has anybody seen those? Yes. Neuropathy Treatment Centers of America. Cost $6,000 to go through their training, five or $600 a month for their coaching, right. and you have to buy all your equipment from them. And when people in my community don't get help with those, they come to my office and we help them, all right? Um, medical tests, they don't have no idea what it is. It's multi-etiology. Magnetic resonance therapy, using the magnosphere, is the foundation for my neuropathy program, all right? It's the foundation for it. You know, being part of the, our state association, seeing where things are going, we have maximized where our reimbursements will be in managed care. It's never going higher. In fact, with the way things are going, it's gonna get, we're going to get reimbursed less uh, for less services and less amounts. And so we need to look for things that we can help people with. All right? Technology drives the results. I can be down here, and I can be seeing neuropathy patients yesterday in my office. My staff's running it. All right? And right now, the reason to consider is that you've already got the magosphere. Now, the biggest danger of this is that you, you're getting this information and you're not paying. I've got this. I got a fax on Thursday or Friday, or Thursday before I came down. This is the blue point to neuropathy. It's $4,000. He's going to tell you kind of, I don't know what he's going to tell you, but it's going to be a lot about what we're going to talk about today. And you're not paying for it. You're not paying a price for it. So you might discount it and say, you know what? That was great information, but I'll do it when I'm not busy because I'm too busy. And so the thing with this is to take the information and, 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 and take small action. We'll talk about that. So don't be, it's, it's, it's valuable stuff and it works. All right, doctor benefits. You're gonna help people, you're gonna help about 80% and I'll go into some details where there's some cases that are way harder to help. But if you average it out, it's in the 80% range. And that's what I tell people, all right? You're gonna develop a little niche. So you have whatever practice you have, you're gonna plug in another condition-specific profit treatment center that runs itself, all right? You've already got the most expensive, and it really is the most expensive piece of technology. The other pieces that you need to put in are relatively inexpensive, relatively inexpensive. And depending on how big you want to go, you could move a lot of your practice into neuropathy, and it's a cash-based offering. And you can actually move into other things from there. You improve your bottom line, and you're not worried about if we're going to get a Blue Cross or a Medicare raise, because right. it's not happening. All right. <laughs> right. So the things you need to think about, what's my skill level? And we'll talk about the things that you need to think about there. You need to do a proper exam and assessment to make sure that they've got a neuropathy, and it's not a sciatica. It's not something else. The clinical interventions, we're going to go through the pieces of the program that I use, and I'll have them in the order in which you need to do them. And with the magnosphere that you have today, you can start on Monday. You can start on Monday. You need to talk a little bit about what patients can expect. Case management, that's essential. How do you put the pieces together? And then once you've got a baseline for doing this, you've got to figure out how to get patients, because you're going to start out looking for patients in your office that have neuropathy and say, Mrs. Smith, I want to try something with you. And you may not even charge them. You may do two or three patients that have neuropathy and figure out how to put all the pieces together, what to say, and then figure out how to find patients. And I spent half of last year and a lot of money trying to figure out how to target neuropathy cases. And the stuff that you guys are offering right now is fabulous. So I'm going to take advantage of that. The stuff that I've done, I know that it, it returns a predictable number of patients, and if you do the right steps, they turn into pain patients. And so you can get a return on your investment that's predictable. All right, so the exam and assessment, you've got to take a patient history, we'll have to do that. There's a certain threshold that we need to do for a board. There's another threshold that we need to do for determine if we can help somebody. So the things you're gonna look for in the history is have they had uh, a spinal fusion surgery with instrumentation? Do they have pre-existing stenosis? Do they have diabetes? Do they have sleep apnea? Have they been exposed to toxins? Have they had a stroke or chemotherapy? And those are some of the things that create neuropathy. 
but the vast majority of people that you see won't have any of that. It's called idiopathic neuropathy. It means that they don't really know what causes it. And someday they will. I had a gentleman come back um, just on Monday from John Hopkins, and it was already, it was already in plans, the neuropathy center. And they did about $15,000 in tests on this guy to find out what was wrong with him, why he had neuropathy. And in the end, they gave him Lyrica and Gabapentin. And so we don't know. <laughs> uh, so I said, relax. You've come to the right place. So toxic exposure can be an issue. Stroke, but we're helping post-stroke neuropathies. We talked about shingles today. You're going to help shingles. There's a whole untapped market right now for um, trigeminal neuralgia or facial neuralgias. I haven't gone after that market, but there's an opportunity there because there's nobody helping that other than doing surgery, and that doesn't always work. All right, so your exam, standard orthopedic, what you're going to find is some of the neuropathy cases also have silent degenerative disc disease, silent stenosis, or silent spondylolisthesis. So you've got to factor that into your approach to how you're going to manage neuropathy, even though they have any back pain. So standard orthopedic exam, you're going to uh, range of motion of the feet, back. Um, you're going to do the standard tests that we were taught in school, the neurological packages distal pulses, and when you're treating, uh, when you're assessing neuropathy, you're going to use what's called monofilament testing, and it's just a little piece of fish wire, you know, and it's in a little holder, and you're going to test 10 spots on, on the foot, maybe seven spots on the hand, and you're going to do a tuning fork exam for that vibratory sense of loss, and you're going to pick it up. It usually works its way up from the bottom of the feet up, and you'll find maybe 20% will come with hand involvement also. I x-ray everybody. I make sure that uh, they don't have a spondylolisthesis, they don't have degenerative disc disease, they don't have stenosis. And if they do have stenosis, then we address that with spinal decompression traction, and that's, you, don't, you don't need to go after that if you're not doing that, or and adjustments. You can make a difference on stenosis. If they've got stenosis, you're going to generally want to address it in some way with manipulation or traction even if they don't have a radiculopathy with it, all right? So you'll see people that come in, bilateral idiopathic neuropathy, both feet are burning, tingling, numb, they're coming in like this, x-ray and they've got a terrible spine, and you're gonna do some manipulation, and it makes even more sense with what we heard from Surge today about balancing out the autonomic nervous system, all right? X-ray, x-ray of the spine, test results. There are times where I'm not sure if it's a radiculopathy, if it's a peripheral neuropathy, if it's an entrapment syndrome, or it's a central lesion, central core lesion, and I send them out for a nerve study. So I have a working relationship with a local neurologist. I send them down and I find out that it's, it's usually just a peripheral idiopathic neuropathy. Um, the toughest cases to help are people that have a radiculopathy, so they got back pain with pain going down into the right leg, and they maybe have had a surgery also, but they've also got bilateral neuropathy, usually confirmed on an NCV. You know, in general, we're going to help 80%. People have um, stenosis with uh, radiculopathy with, uh, with peripheral neuropathy. You're down to about 50%. 50% success rate. It drops off a lot. Mm -hmm. What's that group again? The group is people that have back pain. They've got sciatica and they've got neuropathy. And even a tougher case, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't take any of those cases. If you move forward with this, I would not start with any of those cases. And the toughest case would be somebody that has sciatica or radiculopathy. They've got hardware in the back. You've got a confirmed nerve study that says they've got a radiculopathy and they've got peripheral neuropathy because the nerves were damaged in the spine during the surgery and it's more of a post-surgical neuropathy. Uh, and so those are the hardest to help. And so, um, so anyway, any questions so far? Right, so, you know, case management, the patient says, you know, I've been to the best neurologist in town and I saw your ad or I saw you on Facebook. He said, this isn't going to help me. This isn't going to work. I shouldn't come here. It's like, well, what did he tell you is wrong? He said he didn't know. He said, but the stuff I'm doing won't help you. He said, what is, he, what is he doing for you? And it's always, 
It's gabapentin, and they can go up to 2,400 milligrams a day, and they top out. Then they add in the Lyrica, mm -hmm. and then they do progressive types of sleep medication. And, and then the sensory loss turns into pain, motor loss, and it's a progression that's predictable for them. And, um, you know, we've routinely, routinely arrest that progression and move them backwards. It's routine. So patients say, well, what the heck's wrong with me? I say, well, it's really, it's a constellation of problems, and we have something that's going to address each of those. The circulatory problems, the electrical potential of the nerves might not be working, you're pro-inflammatory in your body, there's toxicities, there's structural problems, either with the spine or entrapment syndromes, the cells aren't working, they're not cleaning themselves out or they're toxic, nutritional deficiencies, circulatory issues. It's like, how much water are you drinking today, George? I don't drink any water. I drink coffee and tea or juice, you know? And so there's some case management stuff there, but that's kind of the conversation I have with patients. And we need to connect all the pieces, all the pieces to get results that are gonna change people's lives. This is, where people's, this is where people cry in your office when you put all the pieces together. So the magnosphere is the first piece, all right? A class three laser. So this is just the stuff that I'm doing. I am not selling any of this stuff, but I'm gonna talk about the specific things that I use. And so um, I've got probably 14 years with lasers. I started out with class two, class 3B, class four. Uh, I've had probably a dozen different lasers. I've got a 25 watt, $40,000 uh, light cure laser. I rarely use it on neuropathy, rarely because my staff will be in the room for a half hour to 45 minutes. Um, I use a, a wrap-on laser called the Neurolumen. I started with a technology called the Rebuilder, and um, you know, I found it helped maybe 10% of the people, maybe even less than that. It was inconsistent, it was unpredictable, but that's where I started and I said, what else, something's gotta work, I know this stuff works. And so that's where I started my process of looking for other things that were gonna help people. So what I do today will be different in six months <coughs> or a year, all right? A little bit different. So the electric nerve therapy, and I tell people it just resets the, the sensation of the nerve so it doesn't fire as fast. Nutrition's a piece of it, that's where you get patients to buy in. That, that's their end, you know, it's not all me making you better. This stuff that I do is gonna start getting you there, but you have a responsibility. There are things you've got to do. So nutrition, diet, circulation, um, spine and extremity care, adjusting the spine, adjusting the feet, the fibula head, the calcaneus, the metatarsal heads, with hands, with instruments, whatever you want to do. Um, if there is compression of the spine, we're going to use decompression, but you don't need to, you don't have to go out and buy a decompression table. You can use manipulation or whatever techniques you use. If we find compression in the spine, we use decompression. It becomes a more costly, complex uh, treatment plan. We do myofascial release just to get entrapment sites. So we take a vibrocussor or a thumper and just run it down the course of the sciatic and peroneal nerves into the foot a couple times and just break up any entrapment syndromes. Just as like making sure um, we're just not leaving anything untouched, all right? I've got some other stuff that we do. Just about everybody gets put on an oxygen concentrator. Most of the people that you're gonna see are over 60. Most of the people that you see are not healthy. Most of the people that you're gonna see are not oxygenated, they don't have any water, they don't have any minerals in their body, they're sick. And so while they're in treatment, we just run oxygen concentrators on them. Um, I have a class four laser, but as I mentioned, that's rarely a part of our neuropathy protocol. But in our history, when we discover they've got sleep apnea, I don't make it a deal breaker, but I say, I can send you to the sleep center and have a, uh, if you don't have an updated prescription for a CPAP, I'll send you to the sleep center. It's gonna be important you do that for the rest of your life. However, we're gonna get results with the program that we're gonna do, but if you don't get on CPAP, you're gonna be back to see me in six months or a year. We try to put that stuff on them. So case management, on this, if you're not willing, or if it doesn't make sense to you to do these things on day one and day two, just like that, don't get started doing this. Don't get started doing it. It's that important. 
So I want you to put your, put your mind in the sense of a dentist, right? You go to, you've gone to a dentist and he's done an assessment on you and said, um, you know, you broke a tooth, you got some gum disease, he does that assessment and then he starts treating you. And as you walk out at the front desk, they tell you it's going to be, oh, that was a bridge that he put into, that's $3,500. It's like, what? What are you talking about? And so it's a way of managing expectations and you being in control of the patient's buying decision or purchase decision. And it's not manipulative, it's just a way to educate people so they make the right choice. You're leading them down a path so they make the right choice because there's really very little hope if they go in the other direction. You're their last stop because the true cost is wheelchair, nursing home. That's the true cost of neuropathy today. So day one, you're gonna do your, your history, you're gonna do your exam, you're gonna do x-rays, and you're gonna dismiss them and say, I'm gonna ask you to come in for a follow-up in a day or two. If there are nerve studies that you wanna get, you might take a couple days, ask them, uh, move it out for a couple days. Um, but that's how we dismiss them. Get the x-rays, um, and day two is where we go over the clinical and the financial. You gotta talk about what you're gonna to do to help them, and then I leave the room and say, somebody's gonna come in and talk to you about money. It's really important. And so many times they're like, they get edgy and say, well, how much is it gonna cost? And it's like, you know what, I put together something that's gonna be really cost effective for you. We'll work with you in terms of money and um, she'll be right in. And, and if they press me more, it's like, you know, does Medicare cover this? And I tell them, Medicare covers very little of this. I tell them right up front. I said, have you ever broken a tooth? He's like, yes. Have you gone to the dentist? Yes. Did he put a bridge in? Have you had a bridge put in? Yeah. How much did that cost? And I said, did Medicare cover that? Well, no. Did the bridge, did they have that new bridge put in? Did it keep you from moving into, did it keep your feet from burning? Did it keep you from using a cane? Did it keep you from progressing along this path toward a nursing home? Or did it just let you chew on the right side? And I said a little nicer than that, but I just try and give them perspective. Or have your children ever had braces? And that's $6,000 for braces. And that gives them a nice smile. It has no medical need for it. Well, you need something, you know, you need some treatment and it's gonna cost some money. And, um, and so the doctor should never, if you're a single doctor office, then you'll need to modify how you approach the money or, or if you have no issues with the money. But you need to train a staff to do that. You need to be very specific in how you these are the things that we want to offer to the patient. And I, I don't talk about money. That's all I talk about money. If they ask me about it, I try and not be evasive, but be direct. And my office manager comes in and talks to them. And I would say seven, some months at 60% of the people commit to care, 70%. That's the range. Sometimes it's higher. But we never begin treatment until the money's out of the way. Just like a dentist would never do a root canal on you, you know, your kid's never gonna get braces unless they figure out how you're gonna get paid. We should be well paid for providing a service that no one else provides. We should be well paid for it, all right? Any questions? <coughs> Couple things about the, uh, um, the care plans. We've tried treating people 10 or 12 times, didn't get where we needed to. We tried treating people 30 times and we found that the sweet spot for most people is about 20 treatments over eight weeks. 20 treatments over eight weeks. So you treat them three times a week for four weeks, twice a week for four weeks. 20 treatments over eight weeks. That's a sweet spot. When somebody says I can only come in once a week, we say, you know, this isn't the right time for you to do the program then. You know, when things change in your life, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna make a change to what works, when they get into their 10th treatment and they're no better and they want their money back or they say, you told me this would help, but no, I said it would help 80% of the time if we did these things and we didn't. It's a losing proposition every time. So we don't, we just let people, we just let people walk. If they can't do what we're suggesting, we don't treat them. Um, uh, yeah. Average, average cost for those 20 treatments? I'm gonna go into that, yeah. And so the other thing about the financial report of findings, which is essential, a lot of you are probably already doing something like that with your, with your care plans. But in our state, we're allowed to discount our non-covered services by up to 30%. And so typically a care plan 
comes in about $3,600. And if they prepay that day, or they prepay as part of getting under care, we give them a, a discount that works out to about 30%. And so the average care plan is about $3,000 right now. All right. But you have, to, you have to check that with your board. You have to make sure that you're not in, uh, you can't discount any covered services because that's against the, you know, it's against your contracts. Yep. Does that include the exam and x-rays or is that a separate? Completely body? separate. Completely separate, yeah. And so I'll talk about how we attract patients in a minute and what, what our strategy is there. So the foundation, there's some typos on this slide. We start most neuropathies in M130 and A130. It's a 60 minute protocol, M130, A130. That's where we start just about everybody. And we give them a tingle sheet, and it's very much like what Alan handed out earlier, and it just lets them report where they felt things tingling. It becomes difficult when somebody falls asleep within the first couple of minutes, and that's, that'll be an issue for some of you, but usually that means you already hit the sweet spot. Um, but M160, or M130, A130, M is in Mary, A is an Apple, A130, M130. And so, and I would say that works for the majority of the neuropathy cases that we treat, then it becomes more difficult. Then it becomes more difficult. If we're not getting those tingling sensations, if not feeling warmth, if not feeling anything in their feet after a couple sessions, then we're gonna switch to an S code we might switch to an H code. We might call someone. We might go to some of the individual, um, not H codes, the protocols. We might go to an H protocol or a, um, and then we do individual um, frequencies, if you will, to see if that makes a change. So we might go through three or four or five different 30 minute sessions or 20 minute sessions until we get the feet or the hands to start to tingle just a little bit. That seems to be the home run. If you can get the feet to tingle in the beginning, you're going to get you're going to get a change that's predictable. Yeah. Are you going to use the HRV uh, to moderate the progress? Yeah, we're going to yeah we're going to we're going to use the HRV on everybody. Cool. Yeah, that'll be kind of cool. And you know, my thinking was when Alan was talking today is that some of the non-responders, we're going to give them a call and say, you know what, come in for five or six sessions for free. This is where we left off. We're going to try something different and do like an experiment in the office. And I'd encourage all of you to think of, think of as having like a mini uh, experimental office where you've got this technology that can work on anything. It can elevate human health across the board, all right? So you have somebody whose sister's got some condition that nobody's ever heard of or things that you would never typically treat in your office. You need to put them in the machine. You need to call somebody and say, what should I do for this? and get a wow, you might have a wow, you might change somebody's life, like the stories that you heard today, 100% of your patient should get into the chair for a free session, 100%. And But you need to follow up what you do. If they get in the chair and have a wow experience, you know, they're gonna buy a package of six. The way it works is if somebody gets in the chair for a free session, I'll start them in an a, a1, a1, A160, and I'll talk about what we're putting them in for, and I usually start with A160 most of the time. And then I'll stop back in at the end and say, how'd that go? It's like, wow, that's the best I felt. And it's okay, you need six sessions to, to kind of make some changes that are gonna be measurable. Uh, take this up front, they'll talk to you about what everything costs, and they'll walk up front to the front desk, and they'll give them an, a prepay option for the six sessions. And that's what I do. I mean, that's, just, that's the sales. That's, that's it, all right. Those are the codes that work the most. Tingling, tickling, warmth, great indicator. Um, we spin the chair around. We don't start with the chair spun around. We start just the way it's set up in that picture. And if they're not responding, before I move to other codes, I'll turn the chair around and center their feet into the chair. I love that little halo. I was wondering if that might be a nice thing for the feet. That would be a nice adjunct. Um, so it's 20 sessions over eight weeks, and it's an hour session. All right, and you monitor progress. You don't want to wait six or eight sessions and I'm not improving until you get on the phone and call somebody. You need, to, you need to have progress in the beginning. You can't wait 20 sessions and then sit in front of somebody and say, well, it didn't work. We tried the same code for 20 sessions. You just wouldn't do that. 
All right. So not 75 minutes, not just 60. 60 minutes. 30 minutes in A1 and 30 minutes in M1. All right, that's where you're going to start. So class three lasers, who's got lasers right now? Does anybody have lasers in their practice? They're great. You know, it's part of the future. Had them all. This is an inexpensive laser. Uh, it's about $2,000 or $2,500. And we wrap the, we, we have the laser apertures coming out on the bottom of the feet, the lateral ankle, and the fib head to capture the peroneal nerve distribution. All right? And so it's got a, it's got a bunch of stuff in it that I like. It's class three. It's, um, it's got infrared, LED, and e -stim. And many times we'll have the e -stim on that gets a little contraction in the, in the uh, gastrox, and it moves more blood underneath the light. That's what it, that's what it does. So we wrap the bottom feet, lateral ankles, fib head. I've tried 30 minutes. We moved to 15 minutes. And this is part of their protocol. They get 20 sessions of this. Questions? Is that a class three device? Class three. And so I've had class three laser. Class three laser doesn't create any heat. Let me yeah. does this, it's, it has a safety issue. I'm sorry? It has a safety issue in class three device. It's not a class three Three laser, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah there's well, no safety sorry, safety issue with it. Yeah. <laughs> and then actually, I don't know, medical yeah. Class, the class three laser you use is it attended or do you have one of those stands? This is everything I'm talking about is unattended. Okay. Yeah, the model is that you don't want to be there on a Friday. You want to take a Friday off if you can, okay. and just have another piece of your business that just grows by itself, and and changes people's lives. That's really what it's about. Is yep. The laser after the mega surgery. You know, it all depends on scheduling. So we have, I think we have four of these. But they get the same day as the magnosphere. They get all three. So you're going to have somebody in your office for an hour in the magnosphere. I would start out with 30 minutes of a class three laser wrapped like that, and 30 minutes with this other technology that I'll show next. So you're going to be there for two hours. It's a big commitment. It's a big commitment. Yeah. And I tell them right up front, we're looking at, we're going to spend a lot of time together. We're going to, actually, I don't, I barely see them unless I'm doing a Justin. But it's the same. It's the 20 sessions over eight weeks. So this is, this is the least effective piece. You've already got the most important piece, which is the magnosphere. This is the least important. I use it just because it's, it's one more thing, because there's so many etiologies of idiopathic neuropathy. I'm using that just, to not, just one more stone that's not unturned. It's the Rebuilder. Um, we don't use the socks anymore. They were silver socks. We just use sticky electrodes on the bottom of the feet. Um, it's nice, one unit can do two sets of feet or one unit can do the feet and the hands if it's an upper and lower uh, glove and stocking distribution. And I've done 30 minutes for, for the last couple of years and we've just tried to see if it works, if we're getting any difference with 15 minute sessions so we can move people through just a little faster. 20 sessions over eight weeks. It's a, it's a TENS unit that operates at 7.8 hertz, 7.8 hertz, nerves tend to like. And so it's another energy system, if you will. And I'll get into that. I'll, I'll, I'll go through that with everybody. And so, let's see. So that's 30 minutes. I wouldn't do any less than 30 minutes. This was covered by Medicare because they were using it for people that were in post-chemo you know, post neuropathies. They were using it for Medicare. They had great evidence on it that it was working, and they stopped covering it. It was using lots of cancer centers. It was working. It didn't work 100% of the time. It didn't work 50% of the time, but it worked. 30% of the time, maybe, and they stopped covering it. It was just, I don't understand. All right. So, you know, nutrition, if you don't have minerals, water, and basic vitamins in your body, this is my, uh, a laser's not going to work as good. I believe, and Jerry, you can, you can tell me if, if I'm wrong. I feel like we get a better, I feel like we get a better response in the magnosphere if they're mineralized and if they're hydrated. Yeah, mineralize and hydrate it. Most of the people you're going to treat are older, so we're using liquid vitamins, highest end, the, uh, the uh, Drucker Labs, Intramax. I use the Intramax, which is the liquid multivitamin, Intramin, which is the liquid multimin, because right? they're going to be exposed to laser, they're going to be exposed to uh, magnetic, magnetic fields. And one bottle lasts 30 days. I cut the dose in half. So uh, in, in our protocol, they buy one of each, and they use it for the 60 days that we treat them. That's from Drucker Labs. I use the Pro Omega, Nordic Naturals Pro Omega. There's a typo there. 
they get a teaspoon a day, teaspoon a day, high, high-end uh, omegas, and that's what I take myself. People have had chemotherapy. They've worked in, uh, in a place where they're exposed to toxic metals. I, I use, and you can use anything that you like for detoxing, all right? And I have an ionic foot bath. I don't have one now. I use something called BioAge, which has been, it's, it's, it's expensive, but it's got a nice detox. But I might change that in six months, but that's just what I'm using right now. I start at one capsule a day for the first week because you don't want to detox anybody too fast. And I might go up to one or two capsules over the course of the 60 days that we treat them. All right. Nerve support, there's a ton of stuff out at, 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 at all of the major um, nutrition companies have something that's good for nerves. That's just the one I landed on. It's from this guy, Guberman, the ultimate nerve formula. And it just has a range of all the stuff that you need. It's got the alpha lipoic acid, it's got some of the Bs. It's just the one I feel comfortable with, all right? And so the, one of the other reasons that nerves die, they don't get enough oxygen, so if you could increase nitric oxide in the body, what's going to happen to the arteries and vessels? They're going to dilate, right? The furthest from the heart, what's going to happen to the blood in the feet? You're going to get more blood in the feet, and you're going to get more healing. So we put them on L-arginine, five, five grams a day, 5,000 milligrams of L-arginine. L-arginine complete, one scoop, tastes good. And then the last thing that we do, um, they always come in and say, my blood sugar is great. I don't have any, I don't have diabetes, you know, and then you get their blood work and they're like right on the edge kind of thing. And, and so we'll, we'll put them on something called Barabine, which is just, there's a lot, whatever, whatever you like for helping control blood sugar, use it. That's the one that I'm using right now. All right. And so this is where you have to engage patients because their role is going to be to take the supplements, make their appointments, and they got to drink water. If they're overweight, you need to have a conversation about losing weight. It's not going to help them that much during treatment, but I, the way I couch it is, if you start this program of losing weight, it's going to help the results that you get from this program be longer lasting. And we've engaged, I don't know if anybody uses Chirothin in their office. It's just a chiropractic weight loss program. We did an assessment two years ago. We looked at all the major things, and it's, it's effective and it's inexpensive. And so we'll, we'll, we'll package this thing called Chirothin with some of the neuropathy cases. We've actually packaged Chirothin, which is a weight loss chiropractic system, with the Magnosphere. And we'll sell packages of 10 or 20 sessions in the Magnosphere with a six-week weight loss program. And that generates X thousands of dollars doing that. So weight loss, we give them a handout from a website called Deflame Your Diet or Deflame. It's a great handout on inflammation. Yep, Alan? What's your results on your weight loss and on your diet? Just the yeah, it actually goes up a little bit. I would say 9 out of 10 people that do weight loss, do the Chirothin weight loss model, and it costs them $500, six weeks, doctor supervised, a few supplements, and they do <laughs> 6 or 12 sessions in the Magnosphere. It's 9 out of 10. Now, if somebody comes in, and we, we learned that we, were, we couldn't put everybody on it because if somebody comes in and says, we had to ask them, what's your willingness to do things to lose weight? How committed are you to losing weight? And if we sold a program to somebody that said, eh, two or three, it was like, hey, this didn't work. I want my money back. Or if they were seven, eight, nine, or 10 out of 10 committed, then it works for them. So you got to screen the people on the front end, and it works. Very happy with it. Yeah. Uh, I always use, I've used the A protocol because if it's going to just de-stress their body, everybody stress eats, you know, so it's just, they're happier people at the end, you know. I've used the O codes if they have uh, more of an addictive eating pattern, but A is where, A, A16 is where I would start them. We ask them to drink half their body weight in ounces per day of water unless they're on, um, unless they've got uh, uh, medications, or if they're on a diuretic, if they've got issues. So you just have to be a little careful with the water, and we usually ask them to gradually build up for that. Patient communications, all right. New treatment approach, multifactorial causes of neuropathy. You've been to Duke, you've been to the Mayo Clinic, and they couldn't tell you what it was. I can't tell you exactly what you have, but it's a bunch of these things that are related to it. I never tell anybody we're gonna cure them, never. Even though sometimes they use those words, I tell them that our goal, there's an 80% chance that eight weeks from now, we're gonna improve the quality of your life so you're happy with the time you spent with us 
and the money you paid. That's my pitch. And I say, and I think that, um, and I'll say to them, and if we help you, if you're in that 80 percent, I'm going to ask you for a video and written testimonial, John. Would you do that for me? And I ask them right in the right in the report of findings, and they're usually willing to do that. And what you'll find, if you're going to do a niche practice like this, if you're going to add a niche to your business, you're going to do stuff online. So you have to have written testimonials, and you really have to have video testimonials to pr present a compelling picture where somebody has a 30 seconds to decide if they're going to click on you. So the video testimonials are essential. All right. I tell people, look, we're going to use this advanced technology and nutrition. I say, you know, there's nobody doing this until you get to Raleigh or uh, Charlotte or five hours away or even Atlanta, which is true. Improve the quality of their lives, may arrest the progression of peripheral neuropathy, improve nerve function. Everything medicine has to offer. Nothing in medicine that they offer today arrests the progression of neuropathy. They cover the slow progression until you go from a cane to a walker to a chair. That's it. I tell them that if you have uncontrolled blood sugar, you know, if you're not managing your blood sugar and you're diabetic, it's going to reduce the effectiveness of the program. If you're drinking and smoking, it's going to reduce the effectiveness of the program. If you're missing appointments, if you're not taking your supplements, it's going to reduce the effectiveness of your program. If you're not trying to get inflammation out of your diet systemically, it's going to reduce the effectiveness of your program. It's not a miracle. If people are killing themselves with the reading and you, you, you still will help those people. You just won't help them at 80%. All right. So this is, you know, we're not supposed to talk about money. I'm just giving you a range of what, what other doctors are doing. And um, so this is sort of the meat and potatoes of putting a care plan together. If it's 20 sessions, um, it's three to five, between three and 5,000, based on whether or not we're going to do stenosis treatment with them. So the magnosphere, I've talked to doctors, the range for a session is $60 to $120. They do a prepay package, it could be $50 to $90, paid up front. The nerve stimulator, um, the rebuilder, $30 to $60. You pick a price that works for you. Nutrition, that can work out to three or $400 sometimes with the nutrition programs. Um, and the class three laser, same thing. We price, we price the lasers the laser uh, and the nerve stimulator at $50. And then if they prepay, they get 50% um, off. And so the package works out to about a 30% discount, which we're allowed to do. Nutrition, extras depending on the condition. I always adjust the foot and ankle, the fibula head. Um, if there's spine involvement, it's gonna be whatever spine adjustments I think are necessary. If there's stenosis, it complicates the case. Don't start there. If somebody has stenosis, you know what, Let, look for that kind of patient two or three months down the road after you've had some experience doing the easier ones. And the diabetic neuropathies are easy. They're easy to help. It's really easy to help. And then we use traction. You could use traction. You could use manipulation. But, so you're going to figure out what the whole program is going to cost, and you're going to discount it based on what's allowed by your state if you're open to that. Without doing this, they're going to pay per visit, and then you'll see them as soon as they don't have a positive experience the first time, they're going to, I'm not going to pay $200 a visit and not have anything happen. They just don't come back. Even if they have, well, sometimes they do, because they had the wow experience on that first visit, they stay for two or three, and then they're gone. And they need way more than it. They need, as Jerry said, they need lifetime, they need lifetime care. In, uh, in, in these fields. So that's important. Yep. When you say that they um, prepay these, is that a, that they're paying the, the prepay, the, the $40 a session or the $75 a session, or are they, they're paying? Yeah. So you're just going to take out a, you know, we've created a form that we use. So I'll put down 20 magnospheres, 20 neurolumens, 20, and that adds up to about 3,000. And then the vitamins, that adds up to another 35. Right. And so my staff will sit down and say, here's the, here's, the, here's the total cost of the program, all right? And if you pay per visit, this is what you'll pay. At the end of 20 sessions, each visit, you'll have paid $3,500. So he said, we're allowed to offer a discount if you take care of your whole balance today 
and the discount is whatever it is. For us, it works out to $500. If you take care of it today, this is the discount. And, and she's good talking to people with money, about money, and I don't, uh, I'd rather not either. And so, so I would do it for free. I would treat people for free. I would make a deal with everybody. And, uh, and I have, and I get in big trouble. Pay you half, or can I, can I write you a check on Tuesday? Sure, I'll treat you. And I take people that really don't have any money, I treat them for free. You know, if they don't have money, you're, and this is the place where you practice your skills on four or five people and figure out, toe dip into it, but you will have just great results helping people with something no one else is helping. You know, that's your call. For me, I'd rather see less people and make more money, you know, from a business perspective. Um, but, um, yeah, on the pricing stuff, you got to figure out what, you know, I don't want to talk about pricing stuff too much. That's that just was, what I'm. That was, that was the idea. You yeah. Know? It's like here's somebody seeing like 50 patient visits a week, but they're charging 50 bucks. Right. Versus me, you're charging around uh, 90 Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm all for retiring earlier, funding my kids' college education, paying off my office building, uh, you know, funding my retirement. You know, that kind of stuff is the stuff as physicians we should be able to do. We shouldn't come to the other end of the month and feel like the checkbook's empty or it's really tight. We should be making a good living. And you have the foundation to add in something that's going to help people that, can, that are never going to be helped by medicine and you should be paid well for it, for integrating all that stuff. That's how I feel. All right. So how do you implement, you already got the Magnusphere on Monday. You can put people in that code. You can pick a couple people that you've already got. Just put them in the Magnusphere. A130, M130, adjust their feet, adjust the fibula head, and you've started your process. If you've got nutrition in the office, get them on some stuff that helps nutrition. Omega-3s, Pick up whatever you like for, you know, some of the stuff I use, I, I, you know, you can call the companies and get it yourself. Um, the class three laser, the Neurolumen, costs about 25, I think, or $2,500 new. I called the company before I came down, and uh, Alan will have a handout for you that just, they're making some kind of offer for you to save some money if you buy one. There's a, you call the company, there's a, something that says Magnusutical 01, I think we're going to give you a 10% discount. And, yeah. The electric nerve therapy, call that company. I think the basis, base cost is 700. Um, they're offering like a 30% discount. There's some kind of timeline on it. It'll be in a little package that he gives you. Pick several family members or patients or just, you know people in your practice already that you can help with this. Add the technology, build your practice and um, start tomorrow. So that's the easy part. You got all this stuff going, right? You can now, you've worked some patients that you already have in your office, you have some experience. How do you get people into your office that are gonna pay and stay, all right? You'll exhaust your internal source for neuropathy, your little community, in a month or two or three. And then you're gonna say, where do I find people that have neuropathy? And the stuff that Chad talked about, the stuff that Alan's already doing, was my experience was that there were two things that we kinda landed on after trying lots of stuff last year. We tried um, we tried um, direct mail, we tried uh, e-blasts, we tried, we exhausted our internal referrals. Um, we tried Google pay-per-click, we tried um, different types of full page ads, quarter page ads, um, and we landed on Facebook target, you know, condition specific Facebook marketing for neuropathy that had a compelling message, video testimonials, written testimonials, with either a call to action for a free consultation or a call to action for a low level exam in our office. We're offering an exam at $25. Our normal 99202 exam code is $25. And that's what we put into our ads. And it's completely legal. So the internal marketing, you're gonna exhaust your patients. Emails helped a little bit. I've done lots of lectures and I have a, a handout when somebody says, 
you know, my neighbor has neuropathy, I give him a packet. There's a packet already made up. It has all our testimonials, all of our technology. You know, I've got something that talks about the progression of neuropathy. I'd be happy to send it to you guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then external marketing, the website, I don't generate a lot of business. Um, powerful ads. And I'll show you examples of some of these. We, we landed with uh, some other friends that are doing the kind of things that I do. Introduced me to this, this woman, um, Cara Rosilla. She's in Chicago. And I've, I've, I've used her. She's already got a menu of condition-specific things. She's got concussion. She's got neuropathy. She's got um, diabetes, thyroid. It's pricey, but when I looked at my return, you know, five to one is good, but there were times it was seven or eight to one. And so I paid her to take my stuff, put it into her menu of her pre-existing uh, ads and um, landing page, and it's been working. I'm trying somebody else right now that's a little less expensive, add some more stuff. We started out just offering free consultations. We tried seminars, but the Facebook ads seem to be the home run for us right now, attracting these kinds of patients. So these are some of the things that we've used. We tried billboards for a little while, got neuropathy, and uh, we didn't find that to be helpful. We've got a compelling um, uh, full page ad that we run on about once or twice a month on a Sunday when there's space available. It's normally a five or $6,000 full page ad. If there's space available, it's seven or $800. And so sometimes those ads, full page ad, it's cut out from the back, um, can generate 10 or 15 or 20 to one in a single ad. But if you spend the money for an ad and you don't have the procedures in the office or the experience, you're throwing money away. So you gotta practice with it first. That's just a hand that we put together and it's part of a, a bigger package. Um, but the, right now the full page ads once a month and, and, and the uh, Facebook ads are working. All right, so why should you, could, why should you not consider neuropathy, right? You've already got, you've got the most important piece of technology, huge need, brand new set of patients, all right? Be different, not the same. It can be very profitable. I would say once you get things going, I mean, you could reasonably add another five or $10,000 a month into your practice with cash. If you, if you invest more money in advertising, you'll see a return. I incremented my advertising in 2015 over 14 by about $20,000 and had about an eight to one return on that advertising. It was all focused on, on neuropathy and stenosis. But I also spent half the first half of the year trying to figure out what was gonna work. Yeah, and so right now you guys, the thing that will uh, prevent you from doing this is thinking it won't work, right? Being too busy in your practice, you know? But this is something that if you're open to it, you've got a way to help a whole set of patients that you would not normally see and do it ethically, honestly, and change lives and be profitable. So that's my story. <laughs>